Okay, folks, uh, it's time to learn about a new type of loop. This one's called the do-while loop. We already know the for loop, uh, but this is a, a little bit more of an extension and a little bit more powerful of a type of loop. So let's get started. So again, the objective for today will be to use a do-while loop. And again, a do-while loop is another kind of loop, so it repeats sections of code just like a for loop does. Um, but it has the difference is something to do with the way that the repetition is broken. And we're going to do that conditionally, and I'll show you what that means in a second. So we'll start by introducing do while loops, then we'll talk about this new danger that we have to worry about called infinite loops, and I'll show you some examples. So let's start with do while loops. So do while loops are very similar to for loops, because again, they can repeat sections of code, just like a for loop does the same section of code seven, eight, however many times you want. Um, but the difference between a do while loop and a for loop is that there's no I in the do while loop. There's no automatic counter variable. When we run a for loop, from i equals 1 to 10, for example, that i starts as 1, then the loop automatically makes it 2, then the loop automatically makes it 3, and automatically stops when i becomes 10. However, that is not the case with the do-while loop. There's no automated special variable that automatically increases like i does. Okay, So the way the do-while works, do-while loop, that is, does work, is you say do-while, and then you have a condition which is a lot like an if statement. Uh, and then at the bottom, you write uh, the word loop. And then on the inside, of course, you can put whatever code you want, whatever stuff you want to go again and again. So let me explain this thing with the condition. So we say do while something is true. So for example, you could say do while a variable is greater than 10. You could say do while this variable is an integer. You could say do while text box one dot text is uh, equals seven or, or is, is less than seven or anything like that, you can put whatever condition you want where it says condition here, just like you would put in an if statement. Do while something's greater than something, do while something's equal to something, and that will, will continue to loop this code as long as that condition is true. Let me show you an example. On the left here, or sorry, I'll show you on the right side, I guess, we're going to say do while i is less than 11. Uh, and of course, at the bottom, we have the word loop. Okay, so this is a lot like something that a for loop would do, right? Because we're going to say, all right, I want to continue to do whatever's inside this loop as long as i is less than 11. Okay, but what's different about the for loop and the do while loop is that the do loop does not automatically set up i. It doesn't automatically increase it as we go through each time. So if we wanted this to automatically, uh, first of all, we need to set up i and we need to start with it equal to, to zero, right? The do loop doesn't do all the stuff that the for loop does automatically. So we have to declare it, call it an integer. And then also the do loop doesn't automatically go up by each one, uh, by one each time. So we have to say that i equals i plus one, okay? So again, we have the do while loop. It says i is less than 11. And inside the loop, we have i equals i plus 1. So every time we go through the loop, i will get a little bit larger. Okay, But the problem is with the do while loop, not only do we have to have this increment here, not only do we have to increase i on the inside, we also have to declare it at the top and give it an initial value. Whereas with the for loop, here's the for loop on the other side, all we have to say is for i equals 0 to 10. So that's a little bit easier, right? We just say, all right, for i equals 0 to 10, the for loop automatically declares the variable. It automatically increments it 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Whereas with the do while loop, uh, we have to set the condition, but we also have to declare the variable. We have to initialize the variable with zero, and then we have to increment it every time it goes through the loop. Okay, so it's a little bit harder to use, but both of these two pieces of code would function exactly the same. For this one, we would get 11 message boxes, the zero message box, the one message box, and so on. And for this guy, we would get the same thing. Uh, every time uh, we go through the code, we come down i is 0, so that is less than 11. It would give us the message box of 0. Then it would increase i to 1 and come back up here, give us the message box of 1, and so on. So these two pieces of code are exactly the same. Uh, they would produce the same thing. So the question is, why is this one like nine lines long and super complicated, and the for loop is like simple and easy? What the heck do we want to use a do while loop for? So it looks complicated, like what's the point in using it? And the point in using it is that uh, you can break the loop without a counter variable. So you can actually do the do while loop, okay, without having something that goes up by one every time, without having something that goes down by two or, or anything. 
Uh, so for example, let's say I have some variable called sum. I'm going to declare it here as for starters, and I'm going to say, all right, sum starts as one. Okay. And then, and this is the key part, I'm going to say do while sum is less than 1,000. And there's my loop at the bottom. And instead of saying sum equals sum plus one on the inside, I'm going to say sum equals two times sum. Now this is key. Sum every time doesn't go up by one, it doesn't go up by two, it doubles. And the for loop is only capable of incrementing some variable. The sum variable doubles. The sum variable could be doing anything. We can have any kind of code we want here on the inside, and we can set any kind of condition we want on the top. And so a for loop is really great if we know we want to go through it, say, 10 times. But if we don't know how many times, do you know how many times we'd have to double the number one to get to 10,000? Because I don't. Well, let's start with two, four, eight, and so on. We could figure it out. But we, this is so much more general and more powerful. We can double sum as many times as it takes for this condition, whatever the condition is, to, to no longer become true before the loop will stop. So it's a little bit more to wrap our head around. This loop is going to continue over and over and over again until this is no longer true. Hmm. So it makes sense, the, the terms do and while, because we're going to do this loop while this is true. If that is not true, then we're going to bust out. So there's one thing to really consider and be careful about uh, when we talk about do while loops, and it's called infinite loops. I'm going to go back to the example we just looked at to show you this point. Uh, so here we have a, a, a do while loop, and again, it has this condition, right, where sum is less than 10,000. If we go through this enough times, first it's 2, then it's 4, 8, 16, eventually it is going to be bigger than 10,000, and we will bust out of this loop. However, if you set a condition that can never be broken, then the computer will continue to loop forever until forever, until the computer runs out of batteries and the world ends. Okay, And that's called an infinite loop. If we set up the loop improperly, if we code this incorrectly, the code will run forever and there'll be no stopping it. I want to show you what that looks like uh, right now in uh, Visual Studio. So I've got a, a button and a text box, and I haven't written any code yet, but I'm going to do it right now. So here I have the button. Uh, when I press the button, I, let's say I want to take the number that's inside the text box, and I want to make it uh, go go uh, go up by 20 every every time through the loop for example so let's say uh, let's so we say do while uh, before we do that actually let's let's go back let's start with the variable I'm gonna say dim uh, my number let's just call it number as an integer okay and I'm gonna say that number is equal to text box one dot text. So that means that the stuff from the text box is now in my good friend number. Okay. And now here we go. I'm going to say do while number is greater than, or let's say do while number is less than a uh, hundred. Okay. Which means that we want this thing to double number equals number times two. This is very similar to the sum example I just showed you before. Okay. So what's going to happen here? Uh, uh, the computer, the user puts some number in the in the in the text box, and they press the button. Let's say I put in twenty. Okay. Then the text box gets thrown into this variable called number. So now number is twenty, right? And then we get to this loop that says do while number is less than one hundred. Well, number is twenty. That is less than one hundred. So we loop. Number times two is forty. So now number is forty. We come back up here, and we say, hey, number is less than a hundred. Right, 40 is less than 100, so we go again. 40 times 2 is 80, now number is 80. We come around again, and this says, okay, is 80 less than 100? Well, yes it is. Is 80 times 2 becomes 160, so now number is 160, and we come around and it says, hey, is number less than 100? And it is not, 160 is bigger than 100, so we're done with the loop, and we come outside. Okay, it's kind of a stupid program, it doesn't do anything. But we could end up in a tricky situation, which would result in an infinite loop. Let me show you what happens. Let's run my program. And if I put 40 or say 20 in here, like I just said, I'll hit this button and I didn't set anything to happen. Here, let's, let's actually go back. Uh, I'll put a message box in here that will tell me what number it is each time through the loop. Okay. So I'll put 20 in here. We would expect to see the first time it's 40 and then it would be 80 and then it would be 160, and then we'd be done, because then after it became 160, we came around and stopped repeating. Okay, now here's the problem. What happens if I put, uh, you know, if, if, if when I'm writing the code to this, 
I forget, you see, to include this line, number equals number times two. So instead, number starts as whatever I put inside the text box, right? And then every time it comes to the loop, the number is spit out in the message box, but it never gets any bigger, right? So here we go. Let's put 20 in here. And I'm going to get my thing with 20, and it never gets any bigger, right? So I'm going to keep getting windows that say 20, and these message boxes are never going to stop because the loop condition here is never going to be broken. Mess numbers never getting bigger, and so if I put in 20, it's always going to be less than 100, and this loop will go on forever. Okay, I can't even stop it, so I have to hit the stop button. Let's make this worse. Let's take the message box out altogether and run this code. Now if I put 50 in here, or whatever number, this program is going to freeze. Because that loop right here is going again and again and again. It's churning around in an infinite loop because the number I put in 50 is always going to be less than 100. And the computer is thinking really hard. It's churning through that loop again like millions and millions and bajillions of times trying to wait until number is greater than 100, but it's never going to happen. And this can sort of freeze the program. And so you might end up with this not responding situation, and that means you've entered an infinite loop. This condition cannot be broken if number's not getting any bigger. Okay, let me hit stop. Another thing to consider very briefly before we get done with this thing is what happens if I put uh, a number bigger than 100 in for the start? So if I, I'll put the message box back in so you can see uh, of number. Okay, and I'll tell you what, I'll do the, the thing where number gets bigger again. Number equals number times two. Whoops, I screwed up my equals and my times. Okay, so number equals number times two. And we're going to get the message box. So again, if I put 20 in, which is this what we had before. The first time it doubles, we get 40, then it doubles again, and then it doubles to 160, and then we're done because that got bigger than 100. Okay, but the, then let's put in something like 200. What's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. And here's why. We come back to the code. And I'll tell you what, we'll use a breakpoint for this one, which means I'll click right here, and that will make it so that the code will stop when I get to that point in the code. So I put 200 in, I press the button, and here the code is stopping here. Number is zero because I just declared it. The text box, of course, says 200. So in a second, number is now 200. Since 200 is not less than 100, right? 200 is, of course, bigger than 100, we never enter this loop at all. Okay, so we don't like go and do it the first time or whatever. Number has to be less than 100 in order for us to enter the loop at any time. So since it was started at 200, we don't do the loop at all and we just jump over to the end. All right, we've seen a couple examples of how to use the, how the do while loop works and things like that. Uh, and now I'm just going to introduce uh, two assignments for you and then you're going to go get going. Assignment five uh, is called countdown to half, and this is going to help us to bridge the gap between for loops and, uh, and, and do while loops. I'm going to have you put in a number, say 600, and then I want the, the, the text box to count down 599, 598, all the way down until you are at half of 600. Okay, and what you're going to do is do that with two different buttons, one that does it with a for loop and one that does it with a... Uh, a do while loop and you have to make them both work exactly the same but do both loops both different ways so that'll be just some practice and then assignment six is called uh, divide until less than one so you're, what you're going to do is have a number say 65 and another number the divisor call it two and you'll take 65 and divide it by two then divide it by two then divide it by two and keep doing it until the result is less than one uh, and you'll repeat you'll, you'll you'll report out how many times that takes to do so, uh, you know, some really interesting assignments that are going to get us some practice in, uh, in using do while loops and loops in general. So go ahead and get started. Uh, before you do that, of course, the one piece of vocab that you must have in your sheet for this one is the do while loop. Cool, that does it for this uh, lecture. Hopefully you've achieved, achieved the objective or we're working towards the objective of using that do while loop to repeat code, but to use that conditional expression to decide when to stop or not.